One of the most underrated systems in Minecraft would have to be the potions. You're able to brew potions in order to improve certain aspects of your character for a limited amount of time. You can run faster, punch harder, take damage... Huh. Yeah, there are quite a lot of different potions, which means that some of them will be worse than others. So today, I thought it would be fun to rank every effect in Minecraft from the worst to the best. Now, notice that I said every effect and not every potion effect. That's because some effects don't have a potion. For example, there's no blindness potion. I still thought it would be fun to include all the other effects, though, as there are quite a few of them without a potion. Now, I want to make this very clear at the start of this video. This ranking is based on usefulness for a normal Java survival world. This is not a PvP ranking, which I mentioned because a lot of people somehow missed that in my enchantment ranking, which made me get a billion comments about how piercing can go through shields. Still better than the fire protection comments. I should also mention that I'm not just judging the effects on how they're applied to the player. If it's helpful to put this effect on a different mob, that'll also help it in the ranking. The final factor I want to mention is how you get the effects, so some are severely hurt by how you have to get them. That also means I will not be counting the creative mode exclusive effects, health boost, luck, and bad luck, since you can't get them in survival. Erm, um, actually there was a glitch in a snapshot where a Fletcher villager could give you a lot of So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and let's jump right into the list. Just like the enchantment video, I'm also going to be splitting this off into tiers, though of course they are all still ordered by their number ranking. This tier consists of 5 effects that I think are undeniably the worst in the game. You may be able to argue the order, but I do not see any way you could argue these belong outside of this tier based on a ranking criteria. You know I say that, but there are also people defending the curse enchantments in my last video, you guys are insane. 30. Mining Fatigue This has the wonderful effect of slowing down your mining speed. I'm sure I probably don't have to tell you that in a game called Minecraft, not being able to mine efficiently is pretty bad. The only way to curse get this effect is from the Elder Guardian, as if you're nearby, you'll get a little Elder Guardian jump scare where they will then inflict you with the effect for 5 minutes. Since this is at level 3, it basically makes mining impossible for the duration you have it applied. Now I do want to say that I like the idea behind this. It makes ocean monuments more interesting as you can't mine through the wall to kill the guardians. Unless you have milk, but that's beside the point. I will say though that this can be quite annoying sometimes, as you can go near an ocean monument without even noticing and get stuck with this. I feel of this bottom tier, it's got the most detrimental effect on the player, which is why I put it in last place. This absolutely no way to apply this to any other mobs, but it's not like it'd be helpful even if you could, so it definitely belongs here. 29. Hunger This effect is pretty self-explanatory. If you have it applied, your hunger bar will go down faster. Obviously, you don't want that as your hunger bar is helpful for both healing and sprinting. There are actually quite a few ways you can get this effect. Three different food sources are able to give it to you. Pufferfish, rotten flesh, and raw chicken. Each of which have a different chance to give it to you as well, with the pufferfish not only being a guarantee, but it's also at level 3, whereas the others are only at level 1. Oh yeah, and you can also get hunger from being attacked by a husk, which makes no sense. Does Steve just get slapped and go, God, I am so hungry? Once again, this effect is obviously no way to use it in a helpful manner. I will say though, it is pretty satisfying to eat rotten flesh and not get the effect. Keep gambling. 28. Nausea. Uh, I guess I should give a warning if you're easily motion sick, so um, skip to the timestamp if you want. The last three effects in this tier are purely visual. While still detrimental, they don't technically affect what you can and can't do like the last two did. Nausea here will make the screen wave around like crazy. Obviously that is quite annoying, but luckily quite avoidable. The only way for the player to get this is by eating a pufferfish. So simply don't do that. Stupid. Now that would be the end of this segment, but I found something kind of interesting on the Minecraft wiki. While pufferfish are the only way for players, and I guess foxes, to get the effect, three other mobs can get nausea. Those are the villager after it's been cured, a zombified piglin after it's been transformed from either a piglin or a brute, and a zoglin after being transformed. Not really sure why they get this, since obviously it doesn't affect them as they're just computers, but maybe it's just meant to be a bit of an easter egg, and if that's the case, that's pretty cute. Again, this bottom tier I don't hate gameplay-wise, they just have to be at the bottom since they're useless for the player. 27. Blindness. This does pretty much exactly what you'd think, making most of your screen turn black except for your immediate surroundings. Obviously, that's not helpful, but I personally find the effect much less annoying than nausea. Currently, there's only one way to get this, that being from Suspicious Stew. If you didn't know, you can actually craft Suspicious Stew using the Mushroom Stew recipe plus a flower. Depending on that flower, you'll get a different effect. You'll get blindness from the Azure Bluet Stew, where it will last for about 8 seconds. I should also mention that you can get blindness from the Creative Mode exclusive mob The Illusioner, but it's unclear if they ever plan on actually adding him to survival. 26. Darkness This is our final effect of F tier. It's very similar to blindness, but not exactly the same. You have a bit more space to see, and darkness has a really cool effect when it's first applied. Now unlike everything else in this tier, I could maybe see a reason why this could be helpful, which puts it above the other four. The only way to get this effect is if a warden is nearby or a shrieker activates, so if you get this effect, you can go like, <laughs> I'm in danger! I'm not really sure if that should count as the effect itself being useful though, because this definitely hinders you in your escape since you can't see anything. Personally, I think it's more than reasonable to keep it in this tier.
All right, on to C tier. This tier, oh yeah, sorry, D tier fans, we're not having one this video. This is for the effects that I'm sure are technically useful, but like I couldn't really think of anything good. 25, invisibility. Finally, we have reached our first potion of the video. When used, this will make whatever is affected completely invisible, unless they have armor or have something in their hand. Yeah, this is probably one of the effects hurt the most by this not being a PvP-centric video, because obviously this barely changes anything when your opponents are computers. It does reduce the range mobs can see you, so I don't know, maybe it can slightly help while raiding a bastion or something. Since this is our first potion of the video, that means it also has splash, lingering, and arrow variants, making it possible to apply to other things. That goes for all potions, so if I say an effect has a potion, just assume all those things come with it. I should also mention that the wandering trader will go invisible at night, and spiders have a chance of spawning with invisibility on hard mode. 24, Poison. This effect is pretty straightforward. It will constantly deal damage. That is, until the one inflicted has only half a heart left, meaning this effect will get you low, but won't be enough to outright kill you. This is another effect with a potion, so while it is obviously bad for the player, it can be applied to other mobs. I don't really know why you would, though. The best thing I could think of is leaving a creeper at half a heart so a skeleton can kill it for a record disc, but besides that, it seems pretty useless. Now, despite being bad for the player, this is another one that I think is good game design-wise, as several mobs are able to affect the player with it those being the witch, cave spider, pufferfish, and bee. That makes fighting all of these, especially the first two, much scarier and more interesting. I think mineshafts would not be nearly as interesting had it not been for the cave spider's poison, so I am happy poison is in the game. The other ways you can get poison are from eating poisonous potatoes, pufferfish, spider eyes, and suspicious stew made with lily of the valley. Before I forget, poison also doesn't affect undead mobs, so keep that in mind. 23, slowness. This makes the person that has the effect applied slower. This is much less detrimental to the player, but also at the same time, I can't really think of a reason you'd want this. Like, sure, you can apply it to mobs since it has a potion, but be real, has there ever been a time where you were like, man, if only I had a slowness potion right now? But this effect is interesting as it actually has two different potions that can give it to you, the standard slowness potion and the turtle master potion. The turtle master will give you a much harsher slowness, but it will also give you resistance, which can be fairly helpful. Still though, the helpful part is the resistance, not the slowness, so I think it's fair to put this low. Slowness can also be applied to the player by the Witch and Stray, which makes them slightly more interesting as mobs, but isn't really a big difference. The only other way to give slowness out is by attacking with the Bane of Arthropod Sword, but only on the mobs it affects. This is such a bizarre addition because every mob that is affected by Bane of Arthropods dies in one hit to a Bane of Arthropods 5 sword. It's like they tried to make this enchantment useful, but didn't at all. They failed. 22. Glowing. When applied, this will place a glowing outline around the one affected. This outline can even be seen through blocks. One other neat thing about this is that the outline color will change based on the name color of the one hit. So if I have a yellow username on a server, my outline will be yellow, which is pretty neat. This is definitely a cool effect, but I can't see it being too useful. The main way you apply this effect is with spectral arrows, which are pretty easy to get from piglins, but definitely not worth it to craft as it costs four glowstone dust. I'll use these arrows sometimes, but not really because they're glowing, more so just to get rid of them. I guess the glow can be somewhat helpful if you're trying to snipe something at nighttime. The other way you can use the glow effect is by hitting a bell, which will apply the effect to all illagers or witches within 32 blocks. Obviously, this is to help during rage, which I can see being kind of helpful. It's still not the most helpful effect, especially since the range is so short, but I still think glowing overall has a few more uses than the last few. 21, Levitation. This is the final effect for C tier, and it's probably the best. There's only one way to get this effect, by getting hit by a shulker's projectile. That means the only real place it could possibly be helpful is in end cities, and luckily there are some uses here. If you have the effect applied, it can help you reach the top of certain rooms inside, along with maybe even being able to reach the ship. Yeah, so while this can be useful, more often than not, it's just pretty annoying. You have to be very careful to not get put in a bad spot because of it, and if you do, you often have to wait out its 10 second timer. So while I would say it's the most useful of this tier, it's also got some of the biggest downsides as well, which is what's keeping it in C tier instead of B tier. I will say though that this is a very fun effect to mess around with in creative mode. By the way, for some reason, if you put it at a level higher than 127, it makes you fall super fast instead, which is pretty weird, but also funny. Also, I'm not sure if people will mention this, but yes, shulkers can duplicate when they hit themselves, which is super useful for shulker farms. However, that's not a levitation thing. That has to do with their projectiles, so it's not a factor here. Alright, onto our B tier, which is where the effects start getting pretty solid. Still not quite on the level of the S and A tiers, but certainly not bad choices. 20, Jump Boost. This lets you jump higher, pretty self-explanatory. The only thing is, I don't really know why you'd ever bother making this potion. First off, it's somewhat expensive, requiring a rabbit's foot, which is a fairly rare drop. Secondly, I just can't think of a scenario where you'd need this, because you only jump up half a block higher per level, so at most, you're hopping up two blocks. At that point, just place a block under you, it's not that hard. With all that being said, why 
why is this not in C tier? Well, that's because the potion is not the only way to get this. This is one of the lucky six effects that can be applied through the beacon. Oh, also you can get it from Cornflower Suspicious Dew, but who cares? This automatically makes any effect significantly better as it will be constantly applied to the player so long as they're within range. At max level, that's 50 blocks horizontally and 384 blocks vertically. And even then the effect lasts for 17 seconds, so you can move quite a bit away before it officially runs out. So with that said, if you have six beacons, you can apply jump boost to maybe help navigate your base a bit. If you have a fence you want to jump up without doing the old carpet trick, boom, jump boost. This is definitely still the worst of the beacon effects though, which means it's got to be quite low. If nothing else, this is another one that's fun to mess around with in creative mode. 19. Saturation. Not to be confused with the saturation mechanic, this essentially does the exact opposite of hunger, filling up your hunger bar instead. Obviously, that sounds extremely useful. However, this is an effect severely hurt by how you have to get it. You can only get it from Suspicious Stew if crafted with a dandelion or blue orchid. That makes this the best food source in the game by far, as it will fill up six and a half points on the hunger bar. The problem is, you can't stack Suspicious Stew. If you want to carry 64 of them, you need to just carry the ingredients, which would take up four inventory slots. At that point, four stacks of golden carrots are much better, so it's hard to justify relying on this for food. I will say though, I have seen this be quite useful during some speedruns, as the ingredients are very easy to come by. So very, very early game, this works as a food source, but as you get further along, there's really no reason to use this anymore. 18. Instant Damage. This does exactly what you'd expect. Damage. This has a potion, so I guess you could use this in combat, but it's a bit tricky since you can accidentally hit yourself too. It does deal quite a lot of damage, six hearts at max level, but I feel like combat with standard weapons is just better. You can, however, make tipped arrows, and these things are a beast, dealing six hearts. However, once you have power five on your bow, I couldn't really see much of a difference at all between them and normal arrows. Instant damage two arrows are so much more expensive to make than regular arrows, plus they don't work with infinity, so I personally find it hard to justify. On top of that, instant damage will actually heal undead mobs, which makes these even less practical in combat. To be fair though, that does give these potions an extra use, as sometimes you may want to keep a zombie alive in order to infect villagers for better trades. So yeah, there are definitely uses for this, I just think it's a bit too specific and hard to use, especially compared to what we have coming up later. It does make witches pretty scary to fight though, so that's something. 17. Absorption. I'll be honest, this one was really hard for me to place. This will give the player using it extra hearts, which is obviously quite helpful. The amount of hearts will vary based on the source of the effect. You can get it from golden apples, enchanted golden apples, and the totem of undying. The golden apple will give you two hearts, the totem four hearts, and the enchanted golden apple eight hearts. Having extra hearts hearts obviously prevents you from dying super easily, but at the same time, I've never really found myself desperately looking to have these extra hearts. This is going to sound like a massive brag, but I don't really get close to dying that much, so the two extra hearts really don't have an effect. I guess they're nice after a totem to make sure you don't die again right after, and having extra hearts while fighting the warden does certainly help, but then again, there's never a good reason to fight the warden, so I'm not even sure if I should consider that helpful. I'm sure some people would put this up higher, but for me, I think this is a good spot. 16. Dolphin's Grace. Just like Saturation, this one is murdered by how you have to get it. The effect itself is really nice, allowing you to swim in water significantly faster. Heck, you don't even need to be swimming. If you run on waterlogged slabs with the effect active, you can run fast as well. The problem is, the only way to get this is by swimming near a dolphin. Now, yeah, that is pretty easy to just come across while exploring the ocean, which is what puts this up higher than saturation, for example, but if you ever want to keep the dolphin in a specific place, get ready for pain. See, dolphins have the unique mechanic of requiring both water and air to survive, so you have to make a super weird setup to keep them alive in one spot, but sometimes the dolphins will just despawn. Yeah, they just die sometimes. So for being a cool effect dragged down by the way you get it, I think 16 is fair. 15. Night Vision. This lets you see in dark areas, basically making everything appear in full brightness. That's a really nice effect, and if you've seen any of my videos on this game, you'll notice that I use it for some of my footage. The only problem is, there's never a time I need night vision. Sure, it almost always can be helpful, but I've never felt like I wouldn't be able to continue on without it, if that makes sense. It does have a potion, so it's easy to access, but I find it hard to justify reserving a slot in my inventory for when most of the time I can see in the dark fine enough. Oh, you can also get it from Poppy Suspicious too. Yippee, I guess. Now, there is one thing that I think they should have done with this effect, as it would make it so much more useful. I think this should have been a beacon effect. Being able to choose an area to have full vision feels like a perfect way to use a beacon. This would also make it so you wouldn't have to worry about weird lighting in a build, since sometimes it can be hard to make it look good while also mob-proof. I would much rather have this be an option over jump boost, so I kind of hope they add it in the future, though I'm pretty sure they won't.
14, Resistance. This simply lets you take less damage. Like Absorption, this is pretty helpful, but it's also not one I can say I seek out a lot. There are more ways to get this though, which I think makes it a bit better. The Turtle Master Potion is able to, but it also comes with slowness, so it's hard to justify that one, but the other sources are good. You can get it from Enchanted Golden Apples, but more importantly, Beacons. Being able to apply a defense buff over an entire area is certainly worth getting. Even if by the time you get a beacon, you aren't likely to die a lot, you still can die, so this isn't bad to have. 13, Wither. This is like Poison and except you actually die. Now with that description, you may think that it should belong near poison. However, there's a lot to this. First off, there's no potion in survival. Okay, I'm really doing a bad job selling this. The main way you'll get this is from the Wither Skeleton and the Wither, which is part of the reason why fighting them is so scary. With that description, you'd think this belongs in F tier, but there is one item single-handedly carrying this all the way up into this tier. Suspicious to the Wither Rose. You get this item by having the Wither kill any non-undead mob, where they will then drop the Rose. Outside of just looking pretty neat, this has the very valuable property of applying the Wither effect to every mob that comes in contact with it. That means it can be easily used to make an automatic mob killer, which from my research is most helpful for magma cube farms since they don't die to magma blocks. Huh? On top of that though, this won't affect the Wither Skeleton, which means they can actually spawn on it. This leads to significantly faster Wither Skeleton farms as the other Nether Fortress mobs won't take up the mob cap. This effect definitely has its uses, and while most of the time you see it, it will be against you, I think it's helpful enough to keep it up in this tier. 12. Conduit Power This is probably the most complicated effect we've touched on so far. It's basically three effects combined into one, those being Night Vision, Water Breathing, and Haze. Now you may be wondering, we haven't seen Water Breathing or Haste yet, so why would an effect that has both of them together be lower? Well, it simply comes down to how you get it. I'm sure you'd never guess it, but you could only get it from a conduit. Essentially, this is an underwater beacon. I would say it's probably easier to get a conduit than it is a beacon since you only need a heart of the sea and eight nautilus shells, but the effect only activates in water. Since haste can be gotten on land, I think it by itself is better. As for water breathing, sure this is definitely helpful if you plan on spending a lot of time underwater in one spot, but I think most of the time you'd want to be breathing underwater, it's because you're exploring. The range of a conduit is only 32 blocks, so it's very helpful if you want to build an ocean base, but besides that, it's a bit hard to use effectively. Now it's time for our A tier. 11. Instant Health. This is the same thing as instant damage, but instead of dying, it heals you. This can be pretty helpful for getting a quick refill on hearts if you're in a tough spot, like dying from the wither effect or something. In my opinion, the most important thing about this is that since it's a potion, it's great to heal other mobs with. Sometimes a sneaky little creeper will blow up your trading hall so it's nice to have a way to heal the villagers to prevent them from dying. On the other hand, undead mobs will take damage from instant health, so I guess you can use it in combat as well. 10. Regeneration This is very similar to our last one as it also heals you. This time though, it does it over a short span of time rather than instantly, but regen potions will generally heal more health overall. Sadly, regen is a bit more expensive, requiring a gas tier as opposed to a glistening melon. While that may seem like a downside big enough to put it below instant health, the thing I think puts it above is the fact that there are more ways to get regen than just the potion. For starters, our old friend Suspicious do can give it to us if made with an Oxide Daisy. Additionally, the three absorption items from before, the Golden Apples and Totems, give us regeneration as well, which is very helpful. Most importantly though, regeneration is a beacon effect, meaning you can constantly heal so long as you're in range. Also, I thought I should mention that a few mobs can get regeneration in their own ways. Villagers can get it by unlocking trades, spiders can rarely spawn with it on hard mode, and axolotls can get it by either killing a mob or being low on health. So for being a bit more versatile, I think regeneration gets the edge here. 9. Slow Falling Okay, I know this one may be a bit controversial, but hear me out. This lets you fall slower, but most importantly, you won't take any fall damage while this is active. That's obviously a really nice benefit, but most of the time you fall off something, it's by complete mistake, so you won't usually have enough time to drink a potion. While I do agree with that, there are two major exceptions that make this potion a must-have. Both of these uses take place in the end, the dragon fight and end cities. Let's start with the fight. One of the dragon's most infamous abilities is to send the player flying into the air. This is almost always a guaranteed death, unless you're skilled enough like me to MLG water bucket of course. That trick can be fairly difficult though, so by just having a slow falling potion, you can stop yourself from even having to try. I always bring slow falling potions with me for this fight. In my opinion, it's a must-have, and since the ender dragon is the main boss, that's a pretty good use for this potion to have. On top of that though, having a spare potion in an end city is good as well, since you'll have plenty of time to drink it as you levitate upwards. Fall damage is really the main danger of this structure, so being able to avoid it entirely is nice. Slow falling is probably not that helpful outside of these specific scenarios, but these specific scenarios are important ones so the slow falling potion gets to place highly. And since this is made from phantom membranes, we can actually say that for once in its life, the phantoms did something good. Yippee!
Okay, back to hitting you forever. Eight, strength. This makes your attacks deal more damage. Obviously, this is pretty dang helpful, and the amount your attacks get boosted is quite significant. On top of that, this not only has a potion, but also a beacon effect, so if there's a specific location you'd want strength, you can do that. Zombie villagers also get strength while being cured, and spiders can rarely spawn with it on hard mode. Really don't think there's more I have to add on here, because it's pretty obviously good. Seven, speed. This makes you run faster. Once again, another one that I think is pretty obvious why it's so high. Being able to move quickly is a huge benefit, and on top of that, it's a another beacon effect. This is usually the first one I put on my beacon, since having extra speed at your base can save you a lot of time. Sure, it's not the fastest travel method, as stuff like the elytra would be faster, but if you're moving around in a smaller area, speed is probably more helpful. Oh, and spiders can rarely spawn with it on hard mode. Super exciting. 6. Weakness. Okay, this one being up here sounds really whack if you don't play the game, so let me explain. On the surface level, this just makes the inflicted thing have weaker attacks. This is a potion, so you can give it to other mobs, but as I've said before, I don't really find myself dying much anyway, so a Weakness Potion does not affect that much. Witches can attack with Weakness Potions, and Suspicious 2 can give it to you if made with Tulips, but obviously that's not gonna put it all the way up here at number 6. So far, this effect sounds like complete garbage, until you realize that it's used to cure zombie villagers. Yeah, so if you didn't know, by splashing a Weakness Potion on a zombie villager and then feeding it a Golden Apple, it will eventually transform back into a normal villager. Villagers are obviously extremely helpful, as they trade with you and get you important items like Mending Books and Golden Carrots. Now yes, you could just find a villager without going through the curing process, but you'd be missing out on some sweet deals. See, after you cure a villager, they will thank you by reducing how much you need to pay for trades. Right now, these discounts can get as crazy as one stick for an emerald. Yeah. This has led players to set up their trading halls with zombies to infect villagers so the player can cure them, which is pretty smart. Now, I do want to mention that this feature is going to be nerfed in the future, as Mojang just released a snapshot no longer allowing the cure bonus to stack. I think that's probably a fair change, honestly, but since this is a 1.20.1 ranking, I'm considering weakness how it is now. Now. Plus, in the future, when we need swamp villagers specifically for mending books, you can save yourself a lot of time by curing a zombie villager that spawned in a swamp rather than transporting villagers and breeding them. So in my opinion, I think weakness definitely deserves a place quite high on this list. But now it's on to our top 5 in S tier. Honestly, weakness is probably useful enough to place up here too, but I wanted to keep this as a purely top 5. So, what do we got? 5. Hero of the Village. Next to Conduit Power, I'd say this is the most complicated effect. First, let's start off with how you get it. After completing a raid, you'll have this effect applied to you for an insane 40 minutes. This has two main effects. At level 1, it will decrease the price for any villager's trades by 30%, and at level 5, that goes up to 55%. As I explained in the weakness section, that's pretty helpful. Sure, it won't get you as insane deals, but this is also much less costly or difficult to set up. Plus, it's also going to stay in the game unlike the weakness one. The other thing that this effect does is let you receive gifts from villagers. After completing a raid, they'll have a chance to throw items at you based on their type. Some of that stuff can be pretty helpful, so if you want to, you can set up a farm using this effect to get all of those resources. In my opinion, this is a very powerful effect. 4. Water Breathing This lets you breathe underwater for the duration of the potion. This is incredibly helpful as the Minecraft oceans have a lot to explore. The ocean monuments, shipwrecks, ocean ruins, underwater caves, and more are all helped by having a water breathing potion. Sure, you can save yourself a bit by making an air pocket with a door, but water breathing takes the stress of needing to look at your air meter away. Now, I did mention that this was one of the effects given to you by the conduit earlier, so why is this up higher? Well, simply because it's a potion, meaning you can use it anywhere. That versatility is extremely important, especially since being underwater for me is mostly about exploration rather than staying in one spot. Additionally, you can get this effect from the turtle helmet, and it will instantly replenish whenever you reach air, making this extremely helpful. 3. Bad Omen Despite literally having bad in the name, this is definitely one of the best effects in the game. You get this by killing a pillager captain, or in other words, the pillager with the banner on its head. This effect is what activates the game's raid mechanic. If you walk into a village while the effect is applied, a raid will begin. While this can be inconvenient sometimes, more often than not, this is super helpful. That is because raids have some of the best drops you can ask for. Raids will spawn with five different mobs. The pillager, vindicator, ravager, witch, and evoker. Each of them have a really solid selection of drops. The pillager can drop crossbows and ominous banners, and the ravager can drop saddles. Both are pretty meh, but the other three mobs are quite important. Vindicators can drop iron axes, ominous banners, and emeralds. The witch can drop sticks, glass bottles, sugar, gunpowder, glowstone dust, redstone, and if they were drinking it while dying, either a potion of healing, fire resistance, swiftness, or water breathing. But most importantly of all, the evoker is able to drop the ominous banner, emeralds, and the totem of undying. The totem is one of the best items in the game since it stops people from dying. The bad omen effect not only makes the item easily accessible, but also far 
farmable. This is the big thing that boosts this effect up, as it can be used to make raid farms, one of the most powerful farm types in the game. I honestly wouldn't blame you if that puts this effect at number one. The only reason I didn't want to do that here is because there are quite a few times you don't want the effect and have to actively avoid it, because doing a raid can take a lot of time. Still though, this effect easily deserves to be in this S tier. 2. Fire Resistance This is the best potion in the game. It allows you to be fully invincible to fire or lava damage. Lava in particular is probably one of the most deadly sources of damage in the game. If you accidentally slip in the nether, you can very easily die if you don't have a potion on hand. Luckily though, lava doesn't kill you fast enough with good gear to make drinking a potion on reaction impossible. In fact, you have plenty of time, around 36 seconds with protection 4 netherite at full health and saturation, and that's assuming you don't eat while you're down there. So with that being said, I'm going to now use the rest of the segment to complain, because I think my enchantment tier list had one of the most annoying comment sections I have ever had on a YouTube video. So many people thought I was insane for putting the fire protection enchantment at the third lowest spot, but it is completely worthless. Now disagreeing is fine, my lists are just my opinion, but some of you guys were annoying about it, so I'm going to use this opportunity to disprove some of the claims I got. No hate to these particular commenters by the way, most of these aren't the rudest I could find, they were just easy to comment on, and also if you want to skip this rant, here's a timestamp. I can't believe you played so dirty with fire protection. Would you really rather spend more inventory space on fire potions than enchant a pair of pants with the enchantment? Yes, look at this comparison. You only take one heart from a Vindicator with full prop 4, but two hearts if you have even one piece enchanted with fire protection. That damage can stack up quickly, and it is not a worthwhile trade-off when I could do fire protection's job better with a fire res potion. There's a limit on how much protection you could have on armor, so fire protection is actually good, because if you have fire protection, dying in fire or lava is basically impossible. If you have a fire resistance potion, dying in fire or lava is impossible. Fire protection makes the fire debuff much shorter. Sacrificing one prop 4 for shorter fire is worth it because you aren't going to die anyways. Taking an extra heart of damage per attack is not worth the little fire effect going away a few seconds earlier. Fire protection decreases the time you're on fire, even if you only have it on one piece of armor. This comment is the same as the last one, but I just wanted to focus on the reply. He knows, he just for some godforsaken reason doesn't care. I swear this guy never goes ancient debris mining, let alone goes to the nether at all. I just don't jump into lava like an idiot! And if I somehow slip in, I could just walk away because my armor lets me last for 36 seconds. But if I somehow really mess up and go into a lava ocean, which I probably haven't done in years, I have a fire resistance potion ready to save me. I really like this video, it was so good and informational, since if I didn't see this, I probably would've just got a piece of armor with fire protection and called it a day. Okay, I included a positive comment because it made me happy I saved someone. Thank you to Super Mario 5588 for listening to me, and for giving me my excuse to say Mario this video. Combine fire protection with regular protection to get the same effect. You can't. Fire protection is good when you don't have good enchantment. <laughs> You're literally calling it bad! <laughs> Potions are a waste of inventory space and only last for 8 minutes tops. Fire protection equipment combined with protection is top tier. You can only last for a little over a minute in lava with fire protection. The eight minutes from the potion is longer than that. Dude, fire protection? <laughs> Someone clearly never goes in the nether. No, I just don't fall into lava, and if I ever do, <laughs> literally stopped watching when you put fire protection at dead last because I can't take that seriously. I didn't. It's third to last. Well, I'm playing on a private server. Half the server, around 300 people, are using fire protection. I just think this one is funny because how do you get 300 people to tell you they're using fire protection? I'll take on fire protection. Two pieces with it stop you from burning. When I'm tunneling in the nether, the fire- Okay, I think that's all I wanted to cover. Again, no hate to any of them, I just think it's funny that having fire resistance completely negates any reason to want fire protection. Oh yeah, this was an effect ranking. Well, only one more to go, so let's take a look at it. 1. Haste. This lets you mine quicker, which is obviously very important. This stacks with the efficiency enchantment, which can make you mine at insane speeds. With haste 2 and efficiency 5, you're able to instantly mine through stone, which makes mining for resources or builds significantly easier. Most importantly of all though, while this sadly doesn't have a potion, it is a beacon effect. Effect, which means you can build the beacon and have the ability to mine quicker for as long as you want in a massive area. This isn't like an undeniable first place, I can understand someone wanting bad omen or fire res up higher, but for me, I think haste is more than reasonable for the top spot. Plus that also means the top and bottom spots for this list were both about mining. It's like poetry sort of right. Also I said to mention this is above conduit power because it works on land, I think that's pretty obvious but just in case anyone was confused. So yeah, at least in my opinion, haste is the absolute best effect in Minecraft. But anyways, that's it for this video. Are you mad that I didn't include the Fatal Poison effect from the Bedrock Edition in this list? Let me know in the comments. I really hope this video is less controversial than my enchantment one. When I put that one out, I thought it'd be my least controversial ranking ever, but I guess not, so we'll have to see about this one. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.